What specific problem does your investigation into ILM's ability to perform density estimation address, and what gap in existing research does it aim to fill? Our investigation addresses the problem of how large language models, LLMs, specifically LAMA-2, can perform density estimation, duh, from in-context data, focusing on their ability to estimate unconditioned probability density functions, PDFs. This work aims to fill the gap in existing research regarding the internal mechanisms of LLMs during in-context learning, particularly in the context of probabilistic modeling and density estimation. By employing intensive principal component analysis, in PCA, to analyze the geometric features of LAMA 2's detrajectories, we reveal a strong bias towards Gaussianity, suggesting that LAMA's in-context process can be interpreted as a form of adaptive kernel density estimation. This interpretation provides insights into the model's learning dynamics, which have not been thoroughly explored in prior studies. Ultimately, our research contributes a framework for probing ILM's probabilistic capabilities, enhancing the understanding of their emergent abilities in statistical tasks. Can you explain in detail how the proposed in-context density estimation de method works? Please illustrate this step-by-step, -step, especially focusing on the prompting mechanism and the extraction of estimated densities. The proposed in-context density estimation the method involves a systematic five-step process. First, we generate a series of independent samples from a ground truth probability density function, Px, and serialize these samples into a text string of comma-delimited two-digit numbers, which serves as the prompt for the LAMA2 model. Second, upon receiving this prompt, we extract the model's softmax predictions for the next token, yielding probabilities for 10 tokens 0 to 9, which creates a coarse 10-bin PDF spanning x in 0 100. Third, we refine this PDF by recursively reading out the next token, which further divides one of the bins into 10 smaller bins, repeating this process until we obtain a predicted PDF for the next state, hat px underscore t, consisting of 10 karatan bins where n is the number of digits used. Fourth, we visualize the estimated de trajectories using intensive principal component analysis in PCA, which allows us to analyze the geometric features of the estimated PDFs as the context length increases. Finally, we compare these trajectories with classical de algorithms, revealing that LAMA's in-context de process closely resembles a kernel density estimation approach, suggesting an adaptive kernel mechanism at play. Could you provide a simple example that walks through the algorithm steps, demonstrating how the LAMA2 model estimates the probability density function from a series of in-context data points? To demonstrate how the LAMA2 model estimates the probability density function, PDF from in-context data points, we can walk through the first three steps of the methodology outlined in the paper. First, we generate a series of independent samples from a ground truth probability density function, Px, such as 614259 and serialize this into a text string. Next, we prompt the LAMA2 model with this string, and it predicts the next token's probabilities over 10 possible tokens, 0 to 9, creating a coarse PDF spanning x in 0 100. This process is repeated recursively, refining the predicted PDF, hat p x underscore t, by dividing the bins further until we obtain a discrete PDF object with 10 karatan bins, where n is the number of digits used. Finally, as more in-context data points are provided, the estimated PDF, hat p underscore n x, converges to the ground truth, p x, illustrating the model's ability to learn from the data. What are the primary theoretical or practical benefits of adopting your proposed method for in-context density estimation compared to traditional methods such as KDE and Bayesian histograms? The primary theoretical benefit of our proposed method for in-context density estimation, duh, lies in its adaptive kernel approach, which allows for a more flexible response to varying data distributions compared to traditional methods like KDE and Bayesian histograms. Our bespoke KDE model captures LAMA's in-context learning trajectories with high precision by optimizing both kernel shape and bandwidth, enabling it to better approximate complex distributions, particularly in low-data regimes. Practically, 
This adaptability results in improved performance, as evidenced by Lama's ability to differentiate between narrow, uniform, and Gaussian targets more effectively than Gaussian KDE, which tends to linger on the Gaussian sub-manifold. Additionally, our method's reliance on in-context learning allows it to gather information dynamically, leading to a more accurate convergence to the ground truth as more data is introduced. Overall, our approach demonstrates a significant enhancement in flexibility and accuracy over classical DE methods, making it particularly suitable for complex and varied data scenarios. How did you validate the effectiveness of your proposed method? Can you elaborate on the experimental design, the datasets used, and the benchmarks or metrics that were employed in your evaluations? To validate the effectiveness of our proposed method, we conducted experiments using LAMA2 to visualize and analyze its learning trajectories on two types of target distributions, uniform and Gaussian. We generated independent samples from these distributions, serialized them into a text string, and prompted LAMA2 to perform density estimation. The experimental design involved comparing LAMA's in-context density estimation, DE, trajectories, against classical methods like Gaussian kernel density estimation, KDE, and Bayesian histograms, using the Hellinger distance as the primary metric for evaluating the accuracy of the estimated probability density functions, PDFs. We specifically focused on the convergence of LAMA's estimated PDFs to the ground truth as the number of in-context data points increased, observing that LAMA's performance remained competitive, particularly with narrow Gaussian targets. Additionally, we employed intensive principal component analysis in PCA to analyze the geometric features of the DE trajectories, allowing us to visualize and interpret the similarities and differences between LAMA's approach and traditional density estimation methods. In your findings, what specific results were attained by the LAMA2 model using your proposed method, and how do these results compare to those from existing methodologies? In our findings, the LAMA2 model demonstrated a strong ability to perform in-context density estimation duh, for both Gaussian and uniform target distributions. Specifically, LLAMA2 was able to closely approximate the target PDFs, even as the Gaussian target narrowed, outperforming Gaussian kernel density estimation KDE, which lagged behind in similar scenarios. Additionally, while both LAMA2 and Gaussian KDE initially moved rapidly towards a wide uniform target, LLAMA2 exhibited a more flexible and adaptive trajectory, diverging from the Gaussian sub-manifold as the uniform target narrowed. This adaptability suggests that LAMA2's in-context de algorithm is more versatile than classical methods, which are constrained by predetermined kernel shapes and bandwidths. Overall, our bespoke KDE model, which captures LAMA's behavior, further supports the conclusion that LAMA2's in-context learning capabilities surpass those of traditional density estimation techniques.